So in terms of uh, Indo-China relations, there is border disputes since major border disputes since 2020 in Galwan, and India in return tried to reduce the trade and affect the economy, but. For the last two years, we're seeing the trade go back up. So, what are your thoughts on that? In 2005, uh, both the countries mentioned that they will increase the trade to 100 billion dollars by 2010, uh, but they never realized this. And it is only in uh, last two years that uh, this has increased to more than 100 billion dollars. Last year, it's about 118 billion dollars trade, out of which India's exports are 16 billion dollars, while China's exports to India are $85 billion. So there is a huge uh, trade deficit that India has uh, registered with the Chinese trade. As you know, in India, the trade is conducted by private enterprises, by chambers of commerce, by private businessmen. Uh, while in the case of India, uh, China, there is the state-owned enterprises even their private enterprises have Communist Party membership. And uh, so they are technically not purely private enterprises. Uh, so, so this disjuncture between the Indian system and the Chinese system is important. Uh, in India, the government of India does not do any trade. It is the private businessmen who do the trade. The government provides for some regulations, some broad instructions on how to conduct trade, etc. But it doesn't get involved in the brass tacks of trade. In the case of China, it is an integrated whole. The government is involved, the Communist Party is involved, the Chambers of Commerce is involved, everybody is involved as a as a as a whole. So that is one difference we need to keep in mind when we see the trade uh, increasing. India-China trade is basically driven by the Communist Party's overall policies in China. Uh, they put a target and the target has to be met by the private enterprises and others. In the case of India, while Indian government may say we should have this target or that target, it doesn't control the, uh, the private business communities. It creates a policy uh, related advantages but it doesn't get involved on the ground with the uh, with the economic uh, development parameters. Uh, so this is difference. Th this difference creates a lot of havoc. Of course, uh, in India, because it is market economy, uh, which drives the economic growth rates today. Uh, even though we have a public sector unit, but it is the private sector which drives the economic growth rates. So they are driven by demand supply and uh, there is a lot of demand for cheaper goods and cheaper labor uh, services. Uh, for instance, the uh, uh, Chinese, because of the manufacturing uh, strength that they have over a period of reform period in the four decades of uh, economic growth rates, they have now cut down the cost uh, in terms of mass production and uh, other incentives, subsidies and others provided by the party state in China. As a result, the Chinese products have become cheaper compared to Mitsubishi or Toshiba or uh, uh, Siemens or Motorola or other Western companies. Uh, so as a result of this, the uh, Indian consumer would prefer to import cheaper goods from China. Uh, these are reflected in some 28% of uh, exports to India of machinery and other products. We also import a lot of power equipment. That is because BHEL, Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited, does not have the capacity at the moment to cater for the Indian demand for electricity generation. For instance, if you have to maintain 8.2% growth rate, as we did in the last quarter, we need to generate a minimum 1,50,000 megawatts of electricity but we are able to generate only 30, 40,000 megawatts of electricity. With this, we will not be able to uh, meet the energy shortages. Mm -hmm. That is why we need to import. If we import from Mitsubishi or from Siemens, the equipment costs are very high. Although these are standard and their maintenance costs, their life cycle costs, their uh, repairs are very minimal. 
yet the consumer is immediately concerned about the uh, higher costs of imports so we went to shanghai electric we went to harbin electric uh, we bought the stuff from the chinese uh, but much of that equipment we realized is under uh, maintenance contracts repairs so prime minister manmohan singh went to china and one of the provisions was also to repair to set up repair centers so not only you buy um uh, less quality equipment from china but also set up uh, centers to repair these in india uh, which resulted in a lot of uh, uh, you know delays in uh, generating electricity uh, in india so because of the demand and supply we import a lot of stuff from china and another item is uh, when the covid happened we imported a lot of uh, oxygen concentrators and uh, generally these cost about 20000 rupees a unit but the chinese sold at 1,20,000, 1,50,000 so they made a fast buck because of the demand mm-hmm. uh, during covid times in india so demand supply plays a big role in the indian market and we are importing and that's how the uh, trade deficit so but what kind of message does this go to china uh, because it it shows that even after such problems that they create for us in at, in the borders we we still will do business with them is that fair this is what the indian consumer has to realize uh, this is what a uh, conscious nation has to realize but uh, generally the business community is uh, mainly concerned about cost factor and where the uh, cheaper products are coming so generally they view from that point of view uh, even if they are importing uh, at the moment this is fine this is not really um, it does pinch the indian economy in terms of current account deficits uh, but uh, there is an effort to diversify the trade aspects uh, we are for instance uh, locally producing many of the products now uh apis for instance for the pharmaceutical industry we now started reviving some of those industries to produce the apis uh, likewise there are some uh, ban on uh, chinese products if these are not very essential the external affairs minister statement to the cii in may uh that non essential items can be produced in india and the chambers of commerce should be concerned about the uh, the overall uh, trade deficits we are facing with china so i think there is some persuasion from the government of india to the chambers of commerce but it is the uh, the business lobbies who have to at the end of the day it's consumers who needs to make conscious decision in terms of national security that is a publisher here we don't just talk we explore question and push beyond the ordinary and if you're ready to see things from a fresh perspective you are the right place make sure to subscribe you're just scratching the surface and the next conversation might just change how you see the world